Hello and thank you for welcoming us into your homes this Thanksgiving. We are so thankful for every one of you. You're about to hear from a few of our staff as well as two incredible testimonies of God's goodness. God loves you so much and we pray you are blessed by our time together. Hello, Word of Life family, and happy Thanksgiving. My name is Jamie Wareham. You've probably seen me around, but I'm excited to be on staff leading the preteen ministry, Life Kids 456, and the Word of Life homeschool group. I'm thankful for this opportunity, and I'm so excited to share my heart with you for a few minutes and let you know that all that God is doing in these areas. I wanted to share a little of my story with you. I was a public elementary school teacher for over 16 years. I love teaching and have always loved working with kids and helping them learn. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I would step away from my role as a public school teacher to work in ministry, I would have told you that you were crazy. But I thank God that his plans are better than our plans and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He is so kind and so patient. God has a way of changing our hearts to line up with his plans. That's what he did with me over the course of several years. As teachers, we wanna help kids. And I'm so thankful for all of our teachers. It is not an easy job. We as teachers want them to be successful learners and citizens, but I started getting frustrated as I was sitting in meetings discussing how to help kids, putting labels on them like learning disability, attention deficit disorder, oppositional disorder, all these labels in an effort to help them, to get them more services so that we could help them be more successful. But all the while, the Spirit of God kept telling me, I want children set free. I want them free from labels. I want them to know what I say about them. The last six years I spent as a reading specialist working with kids kindergarten through fifth grade. So many of the kids had a story, trauma, abuse, neglect, homelessness. The list just goes on. Little kids dealing with enormous life problems. And there I was trying to get them to read when what I knew they really needed was Jesus. I know through my words and actions, I shared his love with them, but God was just stirring my heart, wanting me to tell kids directly how much God loves them and giving me a dissatisfaction with the system. I never really felt like we were helping the root of the problem. We were trying to fight a spiritual problem in the flesh. That's what makes me so thankful for this church, for the pastors who have the Father's heart, they want to see families walking in truth. They don't back down from what the Word of God says, teaching the uncompromised Word of God so that we can walk in freedom. At the same time he was changing my mindset about teaching, he began placing children's ministry on my heart. He gave me opportunities to host Vacation Bible School and Kids Blast, and that helped confirm the direction he was leading me. I began seeking him about his vision, and I heard him so strongly that he wants kids healed to walk in their true identity as children of the King. God had me start confessing Mark 16, 17, and 18. I started declaring and confessing that I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I teach children to lay hands on the sick and they recover, that miracles are the norm, they happen all the time. I started confessing that I lay hands on the children and they are set free from the labels the world has placed on them. This summer, I was hired part-time to start a new preteen ministry. There's research that says that two thirds of kids that were raised in the church leave the faith when they reach college age. We would assume that those doubts started when they got to college, but the research says that those two thirds that left the faith started having doubts in middle school and high school. That's why a preteen ministry is so important. This age group is not like any other age group. They are growing and changing more rapidly than any other time in their lives, except from birth to two years old. They have new mental abilities that they didn't even have six months ago that allow them to connect with Jesus in new and meaningful ways. It's a developmental shift that allows us to not simply tell them what God says about them, but allow them to discover who he says they are for themselves in his word. This September, Word of Life launched our preteen ministry called Life Kids 456. I'm thankful for the leadership at Word of Life. The way they value and love children is just remarkable. I am thankful for all who give to the Building Forward projects that Word of Life has going on. Because of you, 
These kids have a fun space and technology that is just for them, where they can grow deeper in their walk with God. I'm so thankful for this group of kids. These kids are ready to dig in and learn more about God. There is no junior Holy Spirit. I love the way they praise and worship God with their whole heart. It is so powerful. In Life Kids 456, we start every service speaking declarations, teaching them that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and we get to choose what we speak over ourselves. We want to speak words of life and put God's word in us so that when we get squeezed, the word comes out. These declarations are based on 1 Peter 2, 9. I've never had so much fun as I do serving in Life Kids 456. The curriculum is designed specifically for this age group and is so interactive and engaging. My favorite thing about this curriculum is that each service we have small group time. During this time, kids that don't normally participate and share or open up when we're in a large group feel so much more comfortable to do so during these breakouts. I've seen kids that never would share speaking words of encouragement to other kids building them up on the Word of God. I've seen them pouring into each other. I've seen kids ask really good questions or ask for prayer that other eyes wouldn't have if we didn't give them that small group opportunity. I'm so thankful for the leaders that I get to serve alongside with who have a passion for teaching truth to this next generation. I'm so thankful for the way they make connections and build relationships with the students each time they serve, sharing God's love with them. Four, five, six leaders are just phenomenal. Along with Life Kids 456, I get the opportunity to coordinate Word of Life's homeschool group, helping families stay connected and socialize with other kids, giving them opportunities to work together and problem solve, all while growing spiritually. I know God has so much more in store for this homeschool group, and I cannot wait to see how it all unfolds. God is doing awesome things with the kids at Word of Life. I'm looking forward to seeing all that he has in store for the kids here. In every area, from preschool all the way up to youth, God is moving through this generation. What an awesome opportunity we all have to help equip them to be the mountain movers and giant slayers God's calling them to be. I'm so thankful for my beautiful family, for you, my church family, and I'm so thankful for our church. Hi, I'm Bill Hafer. Um, my wife and family and I have been coming to Word of Life for over 30 years. I was a born again when I was like the age of 12, so I've been a born again Christian for a long time. When the Power and Love Conference was here and Todd White was speaking, um, I was standing as an usher at the pastor's door and had never really thought about uh, asking for a blessing or a prayer for myself. Over three years prior to this, I was diagnosed with a gluten allergy, and so what would happen is if I'd eat anything that had wheat, rye, or barley in it, uh, my throat would close up. And so uh, after being tested, the doctor said, well, we could try a series of shots, or you can just avoid eating those uh, foods. So I chose the uh, latter, and I stopped eating anything that had uh, wheat, rye, or barley in it. Um, so for three years, uh, having a gluten-free diet uh, it was a struggle, and um, so as I'm standing listening to Todd White preach, and um, I thought about the blind man, and he yelled out, Jesus, and Jesus said, what would you have me do for you? Because I'm blind, I want to see. Well, Jesus knew he was blind. So I thought to myself, you know, I need to ask Jesus to heal me of this uh, gluten allergy. So in my mind, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to have this gluten allergy. As soon as I thought that, Todd White said, Every allergy be healed. I just heard that. Someone said, call out allergies. <laughs> That's crazy. No more celiac disease. I felt this rush of heat flow over my body, and I knew it in that instant that I was healed. Uh, after the service was over, I didn't really tell anybody until we got to the car and I told my wife. And um, so um, the next meal that we had was at a Subway. And um, I'm sitting there eating a Subway sub and tears are streaming down my face. Um, that's, this has been over three months and um, I've still continued to eat everything and anything uh, with no allergies, no closing of my throat, 
and I just praise the Lord for the healing He's done in my body. So we uh, moved back from South Carolina in 1993. Uh, my wife had been um, coming up and visiting the church with her mother, and so we, we started attending Word of Life in 1993. Uh, I watched my four children grow up uh, here, and then uh, now I have my grandchildren here. Uh, it, the church has been a blessing. I, I, I really uh, love all the youth programs that we have that um, my grandkids can be involved with and my children were involved with, and the love of all the pastors. And uh, even though we've went through some uh, tragic times with our family, the, the, the Word of Life family's always been there uh, to call us, to encourage us, and to bless us in any way they can. I'm so thankful for uh, the blessings that God has given our family, and I'm so thankful for my Word of Life family. Hi, Word of Life. It is so good to be able to share with you all as we are so close to my favorite celebration, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for me is all about cooking and baking, eating my favorite things, and hanging out with my favorite people. It is the perfect holiday. I wear a lot of hats around here, including creative arts director, and I want to start this whole thing out by saying that I love my job and I really do love my church. I was actually away for a few days when Allie reached out to me and asked me to be a part of our Thanksgiving Eve service. I have a lot to be thankful for, so I didn't really need to think about saying yes. I mean, I love my husband and kids, have incredible tribe of friends and family. I have great jobs where I can see growth in my students. I mean, I could go on and on. I'm currently situated in a unique position, or so I thought, where my kids are now adults and my parents are getting older, and both sides are simply trying to give life their best shot. My husband Bobby and I are situated in the middle with a front row seat, and we are constantly seeking God and trying to figure out when to jump in and when to stand back as all of our family navigates this invigorating ride. And I need to add that having the perfect partner strapped in for the ride with me is the ultimate gift from God. If I could give all of this a title, I guess it would be called Seasons, or possibly Get a Grip and Keep Your Joy or Keep Your Peace. I'm finding that many of our friends are in the same season of life, balancing family on both sides of us, and we are all encouraging and praying for each other. There's a movie with Steve Martin called Parenthood, and this movie is about family, it's about parents, siblings, children, and so many stages and seasons of life. Early in the movie, Grandma says something that really stuck with me. Grandma, who doesn't always make a ton of sense, says, you know, when I was young, Grandpa took me on a roller coaster. Up and down, up, down. Oh, what a ride. I always wanted to go again. It was just interesting to me that a ride could make me feel so frightened, so scared, so sick, so excited, and so thrilled all together. Some didn't like it. They went on the merry-go-round. That just goes around. I like the roller coaster. You get more out of it. I love that because really there are so many things in life that we would or wouldn't choose, so many things that we would want to completely avoid, but Grandma wasn't really talking about the ride itself. She was talking about our perspective or our response to the twists and turns, the bumps in the track. Life is most definitely like a roller coaster. There are so many highs and lows and unpredictable moments, so many twists and turns and upside downs. Life can just be crazy. We find ourselves on a ride that we could never picture, or we think that we are headed in one direction and find ourselves somewhere entirely different. How will we respond? Will we be able to recognize the good or God in these moments? As I have grown older and shared so many life experiences in my journey with God, I have realized that He truly is good in every season. And just as important in all of it, I can choose to be grateful, to not dread things and to not close my eyes or hold my breath and wait for that season or situation to be over. There is so much more to life's ups and downs if we choose to trust God along the path. I've learned that my response in these different seasons is the most important part and that actually believing that God has remained with me 
Sometimes I think I take for granted that God is running alongside me to the highest peak, the greatest moments in my life. He is there rejoicing over me and cheering me on along the way. And he is also holding my hand and walking with me in the darkest valleys. Looking back on these moments, I can see God's fingerprints all over it. Sometimes I'm able to see what is not going right or the way that I would like it to be more than I can see the things that are going right, even if it's completely unexpected. Isaiah 54, 10 says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Looking at being thankful, I mean, it really is a choice. We are really either living out a heart of gratitude or we are not being grateful. I am either thankful or not very thankful at all. And I get to decide this perspective. That may sound really harsh to some, but in my own life, if I am not focused on the good in the process, my mind lets me wander to the parts that are not what I pictured. And it simply isn't about me. It's about God working through me and fulfilling a plan greater than my own plan. That is what's really important. So what am I thankful for? Thankful for our beautiful, silly, lovable family. Thankful that in all of the crazy situations in my life that God was right there with me. Thankful that once surviving a season, God has allowed me to give a hand up to another in that same spot. Thankful that in sorrow and disappointment that God brought me through much stronger than heading in. Thankful that God and I have laughed in the face of adversity and many, many victories. Thankful that God doesn't go back on his word and that he reveals himself to me daily. Thankful that I have learned that my way is not the best way and that his ways are always better. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Colossians 2, 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7. Happy Thanksgiving from the Bourbonus Bunch. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Jake Daniels. I'm Abby. This is Max and this is Maverick. And this is Miriam, and this is our family. I wanna start our, uh, our story off with uh, just praying that God gets all the glory in our story and that we just share thanks for him from the bottom of our hearts. Lamentations 3, 23, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. This, uh, this scripture, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it just keeps popping up through our entire story. So I just wanted to share that kind of lay a foundation. And, uh, and our story begins, uh, me and Abby have been married for five years now. Um, the first four years of that marriage, um, I didn't know God. Um, I believed in God, but there wasn't any connection. Um, Jesus wasn't my Lord and Savior. Um, and this kind of made things really tough in a marriage because of Abby's connection with the Lord. Um, marriage changes you and it really amplifies and shows you um, what's on the inside of you. And um, as a woman that uh, just had such a connection with God, um, we kind of got into a situation of um, iron sharpens iron, but me being uh, the husband and not leading our family in faith um, 
because I didn't know faith. I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus. Um, it was kind of a piece of iron, a really sharp piece of iron, just like beating against like a piece of metal that just couldn't sharpen. And I, it was like we couldn't move forward in our marriage um, and grow together um, because of this. She continually talked about like, we need to get into a church, get involved, get, get set. And uh, I, I kept, okay, yeah, we're fine. We'll figure it out. And then uh, one day she just had enough and the Lord just kept uh, putting uh, a guy that she knew, a man of God, his name's Blake, to seek him for guidance. And uh, so she, <laughs> she basically came to me um, with a, a very stern voice and told me that we were going to meet him at the Cracker Barrel. I think it was a Friday on and August, uh, 19th. August 19th. Um, this was a this was a really big deal. I, I figured that we were just going to go see another pastor that was going to try to tell me that I needed this or I needed that. And uh, it was a lot different than what I expected. Um, he came in and basically immediately started diving into our lives. And um, he kind of just blew my mind because looking at him, I didn't, I didn't even know Jesus, but I looked at this guy and I just knew something was on him. I mean, it was, an hour later we were in the parking lot. Um, he was leading in, me in uh, my prayer to give my life to Jesus. And, I was standing there just sweating, kind of confused what I was even doing, but it sound, it was right, it was right in my heart. And so, so we walked away from that. Uh, I was saved and heavily convicted because my heart's desire is to just be a good husband and a good father. Yeah, and then like this was, this was my walk between salvation and uh, Miriam and Miriam's birth I use that as a time frame like a time mark because it's so huge what happened so there's this man that's really hungry at this point for God um, but still really like just I have a lot of knowledge a lot of information but no wisdom if, and very little if any um, so hey well uh, we, we get up to uh, the couple days like leading up to it, it was really calm for me. I, I felt like we were really in a good place as a family because of what we've been doing, what I've been doing. And uh, there were some heavy words spoken to Abby about the birth of Miriam. And uh, um, just like one of the things, it was, you're gonna give praise when she takes her first breath. And- uh, That was about three months before Yes. Gave birth to her. Yeah. Months before he spoke that. Yeah. So three months, and like I'm still dealing dealing with like being a a goofy man and not listening to his wife, especially in such a serious matter. I at the time it wasn't serious to me because I didn't understand it, but whenever you get a word like that, the your Rama word, you gotta you gotta hold on to it and. Uh, use it as your sword. On February 19th, um, we skipped church. It's a Sunday. Um, we're waiting for Miriam to come. We're three, three days past her due date. Is that it? Three days past her due date. Um, February 19th, just a fun fact, six months to the day after I was saved, um, the 19th became a big day of the month for us because Pretty wild things happen on the 19th for Daniel's household now. Um, but we're just kind of hanging out. Um, Abby puts on Word of Life, like on YouTube. And so after uh, worship and Pastor Rob was talking, and then Pastor Tom walks across the front, like down on the bottom, like in front of the pews. And he looks like he's just like trembling, like. I can't explain it. It seems like there's been this, this presence, and I believe it's the Holy Spirit that's just been shaking me the entire weekend. So at this particular point, I really don't know what is going on, what's happening. 
And so I'm just asking you right now to stand with me if you would. And whatever there might be a need within your body, a need within your spirit, I'm going to ask you to just receive from the Spirit of God right now in Jesus' awesome and wonderful, wonderful name. Receive the touch that you need. We believe that our God heals. We believe that our God saves. We believe that our God delivers. I feel so weak that I, can, I feel like I almost can't stand. The presence of the Lord is just with us so abundantly, so incredible. It was like the snap of a finger, like whenever Pastor Tom went into the spirit and started praying that uh, like it was like labor took off. Like, I, I don't know what it was, but it was like right then. Whenever it like went into the atmosphere of our home, it just took off. So the labor's kicking, the midwife's like flying in, she comes in, like she gets, like everything's just happening. I'm standing there like asking them if they need water. Cause you don't, like as a man, if you've ever been there, you don't know what to do, what to say. Um, so you're just trying to help. And uh, I mean, like again, like I said, newly, like six months, I'm a baby in the faith. Like I just, I don't know, I, I hear, I feel, sit down, Jake, like sit down and hold her hand. And uh, that really, I mean, it just, it, it like levels you whenever you feel that kind of presence and that kind of word, you just, especially in a moment like that. So I sat down and I'm just sitting there completely like time's flying. I don't even know how long it took, but um, the Mary, the midwife said, Baby, like baby stuck, like they're they're contemplating whether to call 911 or not, and um, she says we need to get her on her back, and like I'm just sharing the story of the, like through this because I don't even know what's going on. I like picked her up, slammed her on the ground, but like real gently, you know, it's like, and uh, <laughs> I I don't know how, like I ended up like under her head, like I'm like holding her head kind of while we're like doing this. They Miriam stuck. They had to like go and grab her and pull her out um, because uh, like, I, I don't know, but whatever goes on, but she's... Her shoulder was stuck. Yeah, her shoulder was stuck. And in this time, you're worried about the baby like inhaling fluids and, you know, they're, they're starting to try to breathe and they, they take her out, man. And like they tried to put her on her chest, but like, the, and they're rubbing her back and she's not breathing and... Uh, the cords kind of clamped or broken or something. So like, like that, that heartbeat or whatever the cord does, like it, the connection really wasn't there. And I just remember hearing all this and like these girls are freaking out at this point. Like, but like in a good way, like they're, they're good Christian girls. Like they, they believe that like God has his hand on things. And um, so they're doing CPR, they're doing chest compressions. I'm like, I'm watching this all go down. It's like, it, it looked like it was intense. I'm, I'm sitting there like with Abby's head on my, on my lap, just helpless. Um, still getting to know God and his faithfulness. Like, I mean, I just like, this is all completely new to me. They're, they're doing everything they can, and this baby's just getting more purple and more blue and nothing, and the, the anxiety in these girls is just taking off. And I remember I was just looking, and I kept asking. I said, like, they were probably thinking I was weird. I'm like, did she breathe yet? Did she breathe yet? Um, because I, like, I was trying, I wanted to give praise as soon as she gave, she took her first breath. So I, I just kept, like, asking and waiting because I knew like I knew there wasn't there wasn't any other way God said and he doesn't lie so we're sitting there while I'm sitting there she's laying in a puddle of blood and uh, she's getting no attention now because the baby's not breathing and I, I hear some talking and I look down at her and she's just on my lap and she has, oh man, makes me emotional thinking about it she's she's just laying there praying in the spirit and uh, again like the faithfulness that God planted in this woman is unreal unbelievable I, I've never seen anything like it uh, so I'm sitting there just looking at her like okay good yeah yeah like 
you keep doing that because I don't know what's going on. Like God's got to, God's got to move. Um, she opens her eyes and looks at me and says, call Blake, call Blake. And then she goes back into the spirit. I've never called this guy before, like very, very little relationship with him. Um, again, just being obedient to my wife. Um, and, uh, I called him. He's, Hey Jake, Blake, Miriam's not breathing. Um, Oh my God, like, oh my goodness. Okay, he, he, started, he started praying in the spirit. Really powerful man of God. And I'm sitting there. I, I'm not, I wasn't baptized in the spirit yet. So I'm, I'm sitting there. Everybody's praying in the spirit. I got somebody on the phone praying in the spirit. And all the, all the while this is happening, these girls are over there going to town on Miriam. Like chest compression, CPR. Like they don't even know if her heart's beating anymore. But they're just continuing, continuing, going, going. Like I was hearing heart rate. And then they stopped. They quit talking about heart rate and just kept working her. And uh, he said, Jake, put your hand on that baby. And uh, it, uh, it felt like we were going to war. I didn't, even, <laughs> I didn't even know what the heck was. He said, repeat after me. And uh, the girl, went, she stopped. Like they stopped CPR, laid it on Abby's chest put your hand on that baby. I put my hand on him. He said, uh, repeat after me. And I'm like, all right, he's fired up. We're, we're ready to rip. He, uh, he says, in the name of Jesus. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus. And so I started repeating him. And he said, the spirit of chaos and this and that. And I don't even know really what he was saying. And he said, I command breath into her lungs in the name of Jesus. And he just he just had me repeating all of this. And whenever we were done, he said, in Jesus' name, amen. So I was, I was like, in Jesus' name, amen. So he goes, okay. And uh, I was like, okay. And the girls are like, okay. Like they, they're like, we, like, yeah. So they, they took her back and start going. They, her name was Caitlin. She was the midwife helper. And uh, she went to give her CPR, Miriam. And she blew so hard. Like this is the first act after the prayer. And uh, she blew so hard that like Miriam like literally pooped like and it just shot out of her. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny, but like it's, it's the story. So, and it happened and Blake's like, what's happening? And I'm like, I don't know, she just pooped. And, uh, and I'm like, did she breathe yet? You know, because I want to praise God for the miracle that's happening. And, uh, and, uh, but in, the, in these moments, like complete like peace over me and Abby, she's just laying there like believing. And I don't, I didn't know I was believing, but I was believing, you know, just calm and cool. And um, she started to like regain color. Um, after, after uh, we were done and cleaning up and stuff, the girl goes, I thought I blew her lung out. I thought that's what that was. She goes, I blew so hard, I, I thought like it was over. But she, re she didn't realize that like, I don't know, like God anointed that breath and just, it just, it brought life into that baby. But uh, she came into the hospital in like 80 something degrees. Um, I mean, she didn't breathe for 22 minutes. Holy cow, 20, 22 minutes. With how long she wasn't breathing, she should have had some sort of brain damage or some something, um, but she was completely whole. Um, when we left there with her, three days we were in Children's Hospital with her, and we left with a completely whole, um, healthy baby. We find out that. Uh she didn't breathe for 22 minutes, which is wild. Lamentations 3, 22. Again, here we go. 22 is a number. Um, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. That's, that's, I mean, it keeps getting pounded into our story. On the way down to Children's, Abby called Lisa Barbonis and, you know, just told her, like, hey, this is what's going on. If you guys could pray for us, uh, that'd be great. And uh, it was really cool because I, I don't know if, 
people were calling like crazy when we were in the hospital and this cleaning lady was just there the whole time, like hearing like people praying with, with us. I think, was that Elaine mm -hmm. that called? Yeah, Elaine called. And uh, she just got to like, this cleaning lady got to witness that. And, um, yeah, she called and she, she just like prayed over Miriam. And yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it's just powerful how he moves, and I mean, like, I, I don't know what was going on in that hospital, but, like, we definitely caught some attention, and people wanted to know what we had going on, because I, I feel like in those moments, you just really get to see what you could have lost, and uh, it really brought a lot of light to me being like a family man and what I should expect and what I need to do. And whenever my boys are acting a certain, certain way or, you know, it's just kind of like, like God, how, God the Father, He's the true Father. How, like He's our example, How's he how are we supposed to act? You know, just ministering to them and not doing anything that I can. Um, so eight months, I mean, I, I feel like, like mission, now is just, I don't know, I'm just hungry. There, there's just so much, uh, just trying to ground myself in the faith and, uh, I mean, breaking down any kind of things in my life that aren't of God, any strongholds, idols. And I mean, our goal is, uh, as a family is just total submission. Um, in any way that we can, whether it's sharing our story or just um, really anything he calls us to do, we're going to answer. We're the Daniels family and we are so grateful. Greetings, dear ones, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I just simply want to speak a blessing of favor and God's goodness over you throughout this entire Thanksgiving and Christmas season. May his love overtake you daily, moment by moment. May you experience the goodness of our God. Recently, I was reading a powerful book about a revival, and I wrote down some quotes from that book. One quote was somewhat familiar. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. This gave me some new insight into Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, where Paul states, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. My praise will bring those blessings from the heavenly places and cause them to manifest in my life. The Passion Translation even brings further insight to this verse. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because He sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate or praise Him with all of our hearts. What an incredible passage of Scripture telling us the importance of praise. The other quote I wrote down was just as powerful. The atmosphere of the miraculous was and is created through praise and worship. Have you ever noticed that we have a tendency to be more expressive in our worship with a song that we like as opposed to one that we aren't as fond of? But please consider this, dear ones. If our worship depends on the song, I would think that this kind of worship is shallow and perhaps more about the type of song we're singing than the one we're singing the song about and to. Now, don't get me wrong. There are songs that move me more than others, and there are singers that move me more than others. But the time of worship is not about me or the songs I like. There have been times when an old secular song may be running through my head and I'll change the words in my mind and worship God with that song. 
Just the other day, I was thinking about David and how he was a man of worship. There are probably fewer instances of struggle in his life than that which is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 30. We read in the previous chapter that the Philistine army had mobilized to fight against King Saul and the army of Israel. David was on the run from Saul, who was desperate to kill him. So David escaped to the Philistines with 600 of his men and joined up with King Achish of Gath. King Achish gave David the town of Ziklag to live there among the Philistines. But after some time had passed and the Philistines were about to fight Saul and his armies, it appeared that David was going to fight alongside of the Philistines against Israel. Ah, but the Philistine commanders asked Achish, what are these Hebrews doing here? And they refused to allow David and his men to go into battle with them, lest he turn on the Philistines when the battle had begun. And I personally believe that this is exactly what David would have done. So they sent David and his men back to Ziklag. When David arrived back home, he found the city had been crushed and burned to the ground by the Amalekites. And they carried off all the women and the children without killing anyone. His men were so distraught and angry, they spoke of stoning David to death. Needless to say, things at this point weren't going very well for David. But the lessons we learn from this story is found in 1 Samuel 30, verse 8, that states, But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. The New Living Translation says, David found strength in the Lord his God. I truly believe that one of the ways he found strength and encouragement was through praise and worship. Here are some points I considered when meditating on David's actions of praise and worship. Now you may ask, how do I know that praise and worship were part of David's encouraging himself in God? Because David not only loved God, but he showed his love for God through a lifestyle of praise and worship. Worship is one of the most effective weapons we can use against the attacks of Satan. For worship, as I stated of David, is an expression, an act of love. David loved his God, so he worshiped even in an extremely difficult time. Worship is also an expression of faith in God. Instead of turning to that which leads to complaining and being negative, speaking things that are neg negative, David turned to his God as an act of faith, knowing that God is a deliverer from every advance of the enemy. Thirdly, worship is an expression of gratitude. When David sought the Lord and inquired if he should pursue the Amalekites, and if so, will I have victory over them? The Lord told him, yes, go after them. You will surely recover everything that was taken from you. David's heart had to be filled with gratitude and thankfulness, knowing that the promises of God are yes and amen. So this Thanksgiving, make praise and worship a lifestyle that will last throughout eternity. For worship is an expression of love, and faith, and gratitude to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why don't you take a moment right now to lift your hands and to worship your God. God bless you, church. You are loved. And may God's favor continue in your life in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Thank you so much again for being here. We love you, church, and we pray you all have an incredible and blessed Thanksgiving.